fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. You know, there's one snack that youngsters from 6 to 60 go for, and that's a chocolate fudge brownie especially when they're perfect brownies, like the kind you'll bake with Betty Crocker chocolate fudge brownie mix. So easy that the youngsters can turn out a perfect batch with no trouble at all. The finest ingredients are right in the mix, including softest silk cake flour, pure vegetable shortening, and rich chocolate flavoring. You just add water and eggs, add nuts if you like, blend and bake. Mmm, fudgy and chewy brownies that will fill a whole cookie jar. Each package of Betty Crocker brownie mix turns out 36 perfect brownies. They're such a treat for a family dessert topped with vanilla ice cream or for a snack when you invite your friends over in the afternoon. Ask your mom to keep several packages of Betty Crocker brownie mix on hand. And someday soon, why not surprise her and bake up a batch of delicious brownies? For extra freshness, keep them in the cookie jar. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am still there. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding along a route used by outlaws to travel from one hideout to another. They drew rain when they saw brushwood broken down on one side of the trail to make a narrow path. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, easy, Tonto. Let's investigate, Tonto. This way, Silver. Come, Scott. Come on. Come on. The path led to a pile of stones, beneath which the masked man and Tonto found emergency supplies, and a letter addressed to Rip Logan, an outlaw who had been arrested and jailed two weeks earlier. Tonto, this letter tells of plans to rob the Cattleman's Bank in Longville. It's signed Jim Lane. Jim Lane. We never hear of him. Neither did I. He says unless Rip Logan joins them by the 7th of the month, he and two friends will rob the bank without Logan's help. The 7th? Yes, that's tomorrow. We can't reach Longville with a letter by that time, but we can warn the sheriff by telegraph. All right, let's go. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. Come on, The next morning, before any customers arrived, Sheriff Barlow of Longville stood at the cashier's window of the Cattleman's Bank. Discussing the telegram with two bank officials. It's signed by a friend. But it doesn't mention the names of the would-be bank robbers. What do you propose to do, Sheriff? I'll swear in some deputies and station them with rifles in nearby buildings. Good idea. And what do you want us to do? Carry on business as usual. But avoid having any surplus money laying around. Like all these bills piled up there on the desk. Oh, these? Oh, this is an issue of paper money the government printed for this particular bank. It's worthless as it is now. To be legal tender, each banknote has to be signed by the cashier and the president of the bank. We were just about to start signing the bills. Uh, Look, hey, good old way. Put, put. Ice your hands. It's a stick up there. Three men whose faces were concealed by bandanas held guns as they advanced from the door. Well, who chopped? Don't try any tricks or we'll shoot. Keep your hand high. I'll take the sheriff's gun. As one of the men stepped close and drew the sheriff's gun, the sheriff grabbed at his mask. Now well, I'll see your face. Why, you got him. I'll shoot him. Oh, you, you, you shot the sheriff. That bandana's calling my face. Too late to do anything about it now. Get the money. Hey, there's a bushel of money piled up here. Stab it in the sack and hurry. While two of the robbers packed the new currency into a grain sack, Jim Lane, their leader, held his gun on the bank officials. He glanced at the motionless form of the sheriff on the floor. Then, looking past the officials and through the front door, 
He saw townsmen approaching from across the street. Men are coming toward the door. They must have heard the shot. Hey, we've got to get out of here. Our horses are behind the building. Take what cash you've got and go out the back door. The sheriff was badly wounded and unconscious. With no other lawman to organize an immediate pursuit, the three bandits made good their escape. Several hours later, in the cabin of Jim Lane, who was known in the community as a trapper, the robbers dumped their loot out of the sack. Skid and Duke handled the new money greedily. Why, well, Duke, there must be over $100,000 oh, here. Oh, we made a real haul, huh, Skid? Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Jim? Don't you like the looks of this money? Money, my eye. This paper isn't worth a cent. What? Well, how do you figure? What do you mean? You fools took a special issue of paper money that hasn't been signed. Signed? See for yourself. These notes are worthless until they're signed by the bank officials. Gosh, I, I didn't think... You he... never think, Skid. You bundled this job from the start. Aside from grabbing worthless paper, you let the sheriff uncover your face. Now, if you're captured, both the bankers can identify you. It's a good thing you're a stranger in these parts. Well, Jim, what do we do with this money? I don't know. Right now, I'm going back to town. To town? Yeah. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, riding toward Longville, had twice turned their horses off the trail and into the shelter of underbrush to avoid being seen by groups of horsemen. They were nearing town when the masked man said, Turn off, Tonto, this way. Uh -uh. Come on, boy. Turning off the trail for the third time, the two drew rein in a clump of dwarf pines. Oh, oh. oh, fella. Oh. You see two men coming this way? Yes, Tonto. I think we turned off before they saw us. Uh -huh. Otto, it looks to me as if a manhunt's in progress. You think bank already robbed? Think men look for robbers? That's how it appears. We'll find out. How? By asking the two men who are riding this way. We'll wait until they're close and show ourselves. Ah, it's heavy. All right, get ready. Now, come on, Silver. Come up, Scout. Right in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Silver, whoa. He's mad. Don't shoot, mister. Keep your hands where they are and you'll not be hurt. Take their guns, Tonto. Uh, what did you murder now? Who's want? We're not outlaws, and we want nothing but information. Why are so many riders scouring the country around here? They're looking for you, too, and the other crook who helped you rob the bank. We didn't rob the bank. Don't tell me that. Changing clothes and horses might fool some men, but not me. When I'm looking for bank robbers and run into a masked man, I can put two and two together. Who are you? I'm the coroner. It's my job to take over the sheriff's duties when he can't perform them. What's the matter with the sheriff? You know good and well he was shot by one of you bank robbers. He's still unconscious, and if he dies, you'll hang. The grit and spunk of the fiery little coroner brought a trace of a smile to the masked man's lips. He needs Silver closer, as he said, I'm sure you'll change your mind about our guilt when you see what I have here. As the Lone Ranger reached into his pocket for Jim Lane's letter to Rip Logan, the coroner made a desperate bid for freedom. He suddenly swung the free ends of his reins like a whip across the masked man's face. Yeah. You killer! He must have me. Come on, Pete! Get up! Get up! Wait! Wait! Wait. You're not savvy! Let them go, Tonto. We not chase them? No. What could we do with them? <laughs> that corn is a game, little fellow. And just as stubborn as he is game. Uh, he's got plenty nerve. Yes, and he's convinced that we're the bank robbers. Useless to try to change his mind. Well, me still got guns, me take from him. Keep them until we have a chance to return them. Uh huh. We'll find a campsite, then look for Jim Lane. Come on, sir. Get off, scout. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction How you, how you doing is the question And here's one the half that happy people have to pay Eating, oh, we eat And do, 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 okay, okay That goes for the star wherever you are Take Barbara Ann Scott, figure skating champion from the Northland Watch her on this one, Barbara Ann's good Now, there is a champ who's a real Wheaties fan. Sure helps to keep a gal up on her toes. A guy, too. Take Bob Lemon, who pitches a lot of ball for the Cleveland Indians. Lemon knows what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. Gosh, no wonder the champs of tomorrow are eating Wheaties today. 
There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode to the woods east of town where they made camp in a gully. After leaving their blanket rolls and cooking gear to lighten the burden of their horses, they set out in search of Jim Lane's cabin. Meanwhile, Jim Lane spent the afternoon in town. Oh, what the hell? Is it? It was nearly sunset when he returned to his cabin to rejoin Duke and Skid. Hi, Jim. What's the word on the sheriff? He's still unconscious. But the doc says he'll probably live. I suppose everyone's talking about the bank robbery. Yeah. <laughs> and almost everyone is looking for the robbers. I figured that'd be the case. They're looking for a masked man riding a white horse and an Indian riding a paint. What? How come? <laughs> Those two stopped the coroner and Pete Loomis on the trail. They disarmed him, and as I hear it, intended to kill him. Pete and the coroner had a narrow escape. <laughs> so the coroner thinks they're two of the bank robbers. <laughs> yeah. He figures they changed clothes and horses. I wonder who they are. I don't know, Skid. But I think we'd better be on the watch for him. I wish you'd go outside and stand guard. Yeah, hey, all right, Jim. And let me know if you see him coming this way. Right. Duke, I wanted to get Skid out of here while I talked to you. I found the camp of the masked man and Indian. Yeah? Uh-huh. While riding through the gully on my way from town, I saw a new camp. No one was around, so I looked it over. Well, how do you know it's the camp of the two who stopped the corner? In one of the bedrolls, I found the coroner's pistol and a gun with Pete Loomis's name carved on the handle. I'll be doggone. But why don't you want Skid to know? Because finding that camp gave me an idea for getting rid of him. He's dangerous to us, Duke. If he's caught, he'll talk. Yeah, that's true. And he's likely to be caught. They've got his description and the reward posters they're printing. Reward posters, huh? Yeah. The bank's offering a dead or alive reward of $1,000 for each of the three bank robbers and another 1000 for the recovery of the bank notes. Oh, the bank notes are worth something to the bank, even though we can't spend them. We don't dare try to spend them, Duke. The reward posters carry a warning to everyone to examine all cattlemen's bank currency. But I know a way to collect the reward money. How? While the masked man and the Indian are away from their camp, we'll go there and hide the sack of bank notes. But Skid's right out in front of the cabin. You want to know where we're going? We'll take them with us. And after we've planted the stolen cash, we'll kill Skid. Then wait for the masked man and Indian to show up. Then kill them? Yeah. That'll make three dead bank robbers worth a thousand dollars each. <laughs> we'll get one of the posses to go to the camp with us after the shooting. We'll say we spotted the outlaws and shot it out with them. The posse will search the camp and find the money. That'll do it. We'll not only get the reward, we'll also be rid of Skid. Let's go. Bring the sack of money. Right. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto had been dodging posses while checking on the occupants of shacks in the woods. It was dusk when they temporarily abandoned their search for Jim Lane's cabin to return to their camp for food. As they turned their tired horses into a gully, the masked man said, We'll soon be in camp. Ah, uh, it's just brown bend. <laughs> Sounds like silver hungry like you, me. I wonder, what's the trouble, boy? Oscar, open it. Oh, why you stopped? Silver stopped of his own accord. I think he senses danger. Ah, maybe possibly find our camp. That's possible. Easy, said a big fellow. This mount, Otto. Need this scout easy, fella. Now, what we do? Leave the horses here. We go to the top of the gully and approach the camp without being seen. Moving silently, the masked man and his Indian friend soon reached a large boulder at the top of the gully near their camp. Looking down past the boulder, they saw two men armed with rifles. Those men are waiting for us. Draw your gun. <laughs> maybe it's possible. I'll call to them. Hey there. Who are you? The Lone Ranger and Tottle drew behind the boulder as Duke and Jim opened fire. Rifle bullets glanced off the rock. You have to return the gunfire. 
hurry. Them fellas fire plenty fast. They have repeating rifles. They waste plenty bullets. When they stop to reload, we'll have a chance to aim past this rock and return the fire. Right. Don't hurt the men. Just try to drive them away. Now! Bullets from the guns of the Lone Ranger and Toto streaked past Jim and Duke. Others hit the ground near their feet. One shot smashed Jim's rifle. Another drilled Duke's hat. I'm getting out of this. Take two. Them run for cover, a brush. Come with me, Toto, and keep firing. The Lone Ranger and Toto maintained spaced gunfire as they hurried down the steep slope of the gully. By the time they reached camp, the fleeing men were out of sight. Hold your fire, Toto. Uh, men have horses hidden back and brush. Yes, they've gone, at least for the time being. I... Toto, look here in the brush at the edge of camp. Oh, man, hurt. He's dead. Stabbed with a knife. Not right. Him dead for half hour. Maybe longer. Uh, what's that beside him? Looks like a grain sack. I'll see what's inside. Uh, me build fire? Make more light? There's light enough to see. Oh, this is money. New bank notes. Cattleman's Bank of Longville. Uh, it's stolen money. Why it's here in camp? I don't know. Unless... Unless someone wanted to frame us for the robbery. Coroner, already blame us. Yes. Strange crooks leave all that money. It's not so strange, Toto. These banknotes are unsigned. They're worthless. Uh, well, maybe you better we get away before posse come. Find us with dead man money. No. No, Toto. I have another idea. We'll stay right here and wait for a posse. Get the horses while I build a fire. Uh, we get... A short time later, darkness had gathered, but the camp was lighted by a blazing fire. The Lone Ranger and Toto, to avoid being easy targets for anyone who chose to fire without warning, waited in the concealment of underbrush at the edge of the camp clearing. Presently, they heard a number of horses approaching through the gully. Men come this way. Sound like posse. Oh, we'll soon know. Oh, 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 oh. You in that camp! We're calling on you to surrender! That sounds like coroner. Are you the coroner? Yes! I'm also the law! Hold your fire and ride in. We'll not resist. Step in the view and hold your hands high! We trust him? Yes. Come on, Toto. Here we are. Come on, Jen. The group that rode into the camp included the coroner, the two bank officials, and a couple of other townsmen, as well as Jim Lane and his partner, Duke. Oh, 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 Jim Lane was right when he told us he and Duke had found the outlaws. We had a hand-to-hand fight with him. Didn't we, Duke? Yeah, we got one of them with a knife. First, we'd better disarm those two. And unmask that hombre. Wait. Mr. Coroner, I suggest that you look at the evidence in this case before you do anything else. You and the Indian were going to kill Pete and me. No, you misunderstood our intention. I wanted to give you some vital evidence. He's a smooth talker, but that won't happen. Otto and I sent a telegram to warn the sheriff about the bank robbery. You did? The sheriff did receive a wire. He came to the bank to tell us about it just before the holdup. That don't prove the masked man sent it. I think he's lying. I'll handle this, Jim. Do any of you recognize the dead man over there on the ground? Uh, yes, I recognize this man. He's one of the robbers. You two keep your hands up. You've got the crooks. Who can I claim the rewards for them? And here's the sack of stolen banknotes. And we're entitled to the reward for the recovery of the money, too. You'll get the rewards you're entitled to. Mr. Coroner, in my shirt pocket, there's a letter of special importance in this case. I wanted to show it to you the last time we met, but I didn't have the chance. You keep your hands up. Very well. You'll find that the letter speaks for itself. How I got it is of no importance. Now, if one of you men will take it and read it aloud, you'll sure, find... I'll do it. <laughs> Moving close to the fire for light, the banker read aloud the letter the Lone Ranger and Tonto had found in the cache near Thieves' Trail. The assembled men listened intently until near the end of the reading, when the coroner exclaimed, So the crooks wanted Rip Logan to help rob the bank. Who signed that letter? Jim Lane. Lane. It's a lie. It's a forgery. The masked man's trying to frame me. Lane, I know your handwriting from the business you've done in the bank. I'll swear in court you signed this letter. I didn't, I tell you. Let me see the letter. Me too. As postmaster, I know Lane's handwriting. Jim, uh, you do have a shack east of town, as mentioned in the letter. I didn't write that. I say you did. I'll swear to it. Same here. The posse men were no longer paying any attention to the Lone Ranger and Toto. The masked man lowered his hands and held them close to his guns. Then Jim suddenly cried, All of you, hike your hands. Get him up. What? 
This is the same as a confession. You're not taking us to jail. You can't get away, Jim. We'll get you and do it. We are getting foot. away. We... And before we go, I'm going to kill that masked man. Out for kill. As the two Colts thundered almost in unison, Jim Lane reeled backward. His right arm fell uselessly to his side, and his heavy weapon slipped from his fingers. Stand still, or you'll get another bullet. Help me, Duke. I'm helping myself. Trying to run through the rocks toward the horses, Duke gave Tonto a chance to act. You not get away. The Indian, still unarmed, sprang upon the fleeing bandit's back like a tiger and brought him to the ground. My arm! You break it! You let go of gun! Don't drop it! I give up! While Tonto pulled Duke to his feet, the Lone Ranger pushed the wounded gang leader toward the coroner. Now, Mr. Coroner, you have your three bank robbers and the stolen banknotes. Uh, you and the Indian have reward money coming. We accept no rewards. What? We're interested only in doing things that help the West. Then the uh, West owes you a debt of gratitude for what you've done tonight. Come on, Tonto. Uh -huh. where, where are you going? We're through with our work here. Oh, you'll find your gun and Pete's right there beside our campfire. Adios. Hey, goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, goodbye. He's got easy brother. Come on, Come I'd certainly like to know who that masked man is. Imagine turning down a reward. Well, I can think of only one man who'd turn down a reward. And that masked man fits the description of him. Uh, who's that? The Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.